Mr. Grossman. May it please the court. Um, I reserve five minutes for preliminary statement, but in view of what's been argued by Mr. Aslander, I'll just go right into it if, with the court's permission. Uh, there's really nothing more to add to the notion of plain language other than retirement systems are, in, are, in, are, are inclusive. It's not just the base pension, but the pension adjustment. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a system. Otherwise, there wouldn't be benefits. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a program. I really do not see an ambiguity. I see some very, very plain language that includes an entirety, with the exception of medical benefits, which, is, which are plainly stated. If you read a and, sections A and B together, I think that there's really no question that the legislative intent is plain, that the that, that retirees after 1997 couldn't expect their medical benefits to remain the same. But everything else is encompassed in, and I always mess up the exact language of the, the statute, um, the um, <laughs> means that the benefits program for any employee for whom the right has attached cannot be reduced. So benefits program doesn't include medical benefits, but it includes everything else. I, I, I think that to suggest there's an ambiguity actually is a stretch. Yeah, there could have been a uh, um, uh, definitional section and that might have helped, but I, I don't really think that that's fatal. I, I can't imagine how anybody who reads this the common man or interpreting the statutes from, you know, all off the perch can do anything other than look to the language. The introduction of an ambiguity has to do with the, with the source of the funding, the idea that there's a Pension Adjustment Act and that there are pe the various pension funds. But Together, they constitute systems, they constitute benefits. I mean, what, uh, essentially, what are benefits? Benefits are money. Benefits, th that's what benefits are. And all this, all that the um, statute says is that the benefits program is what's going to, what exists as of 1997 when it was enacted, except for the medical, be except for the medical benefits. I, I can't get beyond that. I can't see any ambiguity there. Uh, it's it's simply basic that the legislature was encompassing everything other than medical benefits. Uh, I, I, I can't really say anything more. And what whether you use an unequivocal intent standard, you have got a legislative history where nobody seems to have questioned what that encompassed. I mean, it, it seems that the legislative history of the statute does nothing but you know, accept that. Now, I, I believe that the concept that the language comes from ERISA, and if, if that's the case, and if that's what we're going to look to, then, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty clear that, the, that those um, intentions are, 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 are to include colors. As far as the questions about whether you can use other statutory mechanisms to interpret it, well, I think it's they're required because it uses the word systems, so it's referring to a number of statutes. So if you read the statutes in pari materia, then you have to come to the conclusion that COLAs are included. And also, when you uh, approach these, you have to keep in mind that throughout the law, the pension statutes have been um, interpreted as remedial in favor of the pensioner rather than in favor of the government. Uh, Mr. Aslander was talking about equitable principles. And candidly, 
pensions, as far as I can determine, are really the only area in which equitable estoppels have been held to run against the state. And those equitable estoppels are based on detrimental reliance and a change in position. And that's where the, the I, I think it's actually Skolsky versus Nolan, or perhaps even an earlier case, I'm where- sorry, I, I didn't hear the case you cited. Skuls Skolsky versus Nolan. I cited, it's one of the very few cases I cited in my brief to this court. Um, and if it's not there, it's in the case that it cites, which it. is even earlier. But anybody who retired changed their position in reliance on what was guaranteed to them at the time. So to the extent that a contract doesn't, is, doesn't exist on the face of it, we do have, do have to look to equitable principles. And under, <clears throat> excuse me, under those, principles, you come up with the same conclusion. Colas are included. Um, so bef bef before 1997, could, could the le legislature have this eliminated Colas? Well, I, I suppose it could have. I suppose it could have if the pensioner wasn't receiving one as a matter of entitlement. If he was, then he'd have an action he might well have an action in equity. But I'm not, my, my clients all retired after 1997. And if it's going to come, if it comes down to that, as to whom the COLA attaches be, as a matter of legislation rather than some other operation of law, we're unaffected. You want to leave that answer to another advocate? Mm -hmm. because, absolutely. Because it's, it's really not my, it's really not my, respectfully, and I don't, mean any dis it's not really not my concern as far as my clients are concerned um again uh, i can't say enough or say enough to say repeatedly and i'm beginning to repeat myself the notion of an ambiguity just is something that you have to look for it's not there I, 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 it's an ambiguity is where something is capable of two meanings. This is not capable of two meanings. This is capable of one meaning. We're talking about systems, programs. What is the impact if, there, if the court were to find an ambiguity on the contract argument? If there were, were in, on, the, on the face of the statute, Find that the language was well, because, ambiguous. Because at that point, rather than an ambiguity in the legislative history or any of the other extrinsic aids, simply on the face of the statute. That's what, exactly. Then if you did resort to extrinsic aids, you'd have to go to the, the legislative history. What is the, let me ask it more precisely. If, there, if the court finds an ambiguity based on what we know of the standard for finding a contract, can it find a contract if there's ambiguous language in the statute? I think that's framed a little differently than it was asked to Mr. Auslander, and I think the answer to that is yes. And the reason is because if you, because the idea that a statute creating a contract has to um, express or has to express the unequivocal intent of the legislators doesn't necessarily negate the notion that they could have messed up when they actually drafted the statute. So, and I can... So, let me just understand. So, the, 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 the space between unambig an unambiguous expression and, and um, the, the end of a contract argument would be where the legislature intended to unambiguously create a contract, but made an error in doing so? Yes, and I don't think that's inconsistent with... Is there any law that you have that would help you with that? I don't think it's arisen, to the best of my knowledge. I, I, I don't think it's arisen. I think that the cases where there have been ambiguities are not so much in the creation of the contract, in pension, in pension areas, not so much where there, where there <clears throat> not so much where there are ambiguities in the creation of the contract but in the interpretation and in those cases because of the nature of the 
law to resolve in favor of the pensioner, but in not in favor of the state. In cases where courts have concluded the language is not unequivocal but is ambiguous, is there any law that says you look to the legislative history to, to see if maybe the legislature messed up? Yes, I can actually, um, I, I, I can actually think of one that um, uh, that uh, um, had to do with the cut of criminal justice, where the legislature, um, in t under Title II, and the name of the case is State versus Butler. Um, and I happen to know it because I lost when I was a deputy attorney general arguing for this. You always remember those. I remember those. I remember. I lost. Okay. The let when under Title II A. Um, the court had interpreted the use of a toy gun. But let me ask you, that's not a contract case. No, it's not. Okay. But so you, you, I thought we were going outside. I thought we were no, going I mean, outside. There certainly are cases where, where, where courts have determined the legislature made an error, but I'm talking about where we're talking about on the unequivocal standard to create a contract. Is there ever been a case that says we, we find ambiguity, but we think there's nonetheless a legislative intent and there was something went awry between the legislative intent and what ended up on the written I'm page. not aware of one. I'm not aware of one. But, but again, I, 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 I think that that actually supports um, the plaintiff's argument here that the language does not create an ambiguity. An ambiguity, I think, would be if um, the, uh, uh, the legislature had, had had tried to exclude another sort of benefit um, and didn't, or if they had, there, because there were only three components realistically to the to the uh, to the system. There's the uh, pension, the the cola, and the uh, and medical benefits. So I you know it it it's really difficult for me to see how. I mean, they could have said. A non profitable or right shall attach to, and then you know give the give the list. But they excluded the one, and not the other two. Then you'd have to come to a conclusion that there was no right to a pension, um, to the base pension as well, because they didn't say pension. They said whatever they said. The uh, I don't know. I keep benefits program, and I keep. Miss thinking, I keep wanting to stick, stick retirement in there, and it's not there in the law. But there are only three components. So if you take the one out, you've got the other two. So I, 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 I just can't imagine um, how that's ambiguous. I, I, I really, just as a matter of interpretation, when you look at the um, pension concept and the adjustments, systemically, and we take into consideration all the pension statutes and all these you know, the statutes <clears throat> affecting pensions, the, um, the, the notion of a system and the notion of program are inclusive. And, and, and therefore, I really believe that the legislature, legislative intent is unequivocal. Is there anything you'd like to add to your argument? No. Thank you.